Hey guys, welcome to Facebook Live. We're having our interview series. This is going to be once a month, probably going to try for Friday nights around 7.30, usually on the third week, depending on everyone's schedule. Uh, tonight we have Alex Bunig, and she is coming to tell us about her... Oh, let me see if I can get us on Facebook. Her journey with Noel. Let's see. Timeline. Pardon me while I figure out how to get on Facebook Live. Okay. Hi, guys. In case this didn't go through before, we are doing our live interview series with Alex Bunig tonight. She's going to tell us about her journey with Noel and some of the battles she's gone. She's been with us a little over two years, maybe even almost three years now. I might be uh, gaining on that. So let me pop over back to Zoom. And Alex, if you're there, pop on in. Hey. Hey, lady. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited. We are, I've been waiting to do this interview for so long because uh, we just have such an interesting story with Noel. And I don't know, she looks like my dog. So I kind of like her a lot. Okay. <laughs> she reminds me of, twins, yeah. They are twins. Mr. Gates. She looks a lot like Mr. Gates. And um, you just have such an interesting story because. Noelle's expression isn't aggression. Not that she doesn't have feelings now that she's been getting some confidence and we'll get into that stuff, but um, it wasn't aggression. So it's a totally different journey for you and still having to use the same techniques. And I really kind of want to see what's been working for you, what your journey's been like, and just let everybody kind of hear, because it's, it's interesting because people come into class and they see you and they see Kristen and they see everybody kind of out there looking perfect out there. Their dogs are calm and because you've worked on that part and you guys all have different areas that you're working on. Um, and it's uh, really interesting to watch the newbies come in and be a little intimidated by watching everything look so much like clockwork. But I mean, my goodness, you've been lurking on it for two years, you know, yeah, it should honest, look like we clockwork. still probably have more to clean up than a lot of people in class. It's just, you don't see Noel's expression in class. <laughs> right. Right. Which took a long time. Yeah. Right. And, and then sometimes um, that's easy to forget. Right. I mean, right. because you get so caught up in the moment of what you're doing now and what you're working on now. And then all of a sudden, you get frustrated and then it's easy. Once one day you stop and you're like, you see somebody else in class and you're like, oh yeah, that uh, brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what, can you tell us just to start it off? Um, what brought you into everyday canine? Like okay. what led you to us? You know, did yeah. you have trainers before that? Yeah. Uh, several. <laughs> um, so I adopted Noel. That was a loaded she, question. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I adopted Noel when she was four or five months old. Um, I got her from the Humane Society. And when I got her, they couldn't tell me anything about her or her, her history, but I was like, I love this girl. I'm going to take her home. And I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, at first, she was always like really shy and timid around anything like noises would scare her but I just kind of wrote it off to being a shelter dog and about a month and a half into having her because it was still towards the end of COVID like 2021 I had a trainer come into my house because there really wasn't any other options um and so he was working with us and we were making really awesome progress on obedience. Obedience has never been an issue, but right, as right. we were moving on, we were probably at her being six to seven months old and her fear was just spiraling out of control. Like I couldn't walk down the street in front of our condo without her stopping and refusing to walk or the right. maintenance man would drive by in his golf cart and she'd like try to jump into the street away from him and then she started developing separation anxiety where it got to the point where I couldn't leave my house because she would howl for hours and hours without stopping 
which is obviously a problem in a condo. <laughs> um, so then I was telling my trainer all of this and he was like, oh, you just have to work on crate games and positive reinforcement. So clicker training when she's getting scared of something, get her to divert to attention to you and click. And now I know that I was probably reinforcing her fear <laughs> with my poor timing and things like that by rewarding her. I mean, it's hard. Yeah. Time is really hard. It takes a long time to get that timing down. So I think you're, you're onto something there with, um, you can do so much damage without knowing it, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's what was me. I was like, I'm a trainer. And I, yeah, it was, so I love the realizations that you come to, like the, the level that we're on now to where we can talk about things and you grasp stuff and we can like intellectually break down things. And I think we were talking, um, I'm talking with to another couple students that were, were getting able to be nitpicky about behaviors yeah. and not be <laughs> like, like we got so much done the stressors, the big stressors, like we, that's what we attack first. Like, let's get your stressors. And now we can be like, you know, okay, this looks pretty good. Okay. But look this, we could work on this. This is an opportunity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that makes me like, so excited. So, excited. <laughs> so watch your brain work it. And then you come yeah. to me and say, this is what I'm thinking. And, and it just shows so much independence and so much growth and so much, uh, exactly what I was trying to get into you know like you right. can do this yeah i love it yeah don't mind I mean, me trying to pull up facebook live at the same time so i can see if anybody's uh, <laughs> uh popping on asking questions so you keep going alex i'm listening all right oh no but i guess by that point i was like all right we're three or four months into this painful cycle <laughs> it's not getting better and i had only gotten so many classes with that trainer so i was like back on my own and i was like okay, obedience isn't the problem. Maybe I just need to like expose her to more and more things and start training her with distractions. So I was like, I'll take her to PetSmart because we don't really need the obedience, but we could use the exposure. That yeah. was a total bomb. The first class we went to, there was like six reactive dogs in our class and they were all sounding off and she was horrified and had accidents on the floor. <laughs> and, oh man, yeah. 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 Uh, it's a lot. And PetSmart is a lot to be in. Uh, it's almost like, like I love the dog training club, but it's really intense in there because there's everybody's there with their dogs and they got problems and stuff. And you're inside yeah. a small building, you know, and it just builds the, the real, the reality of the pressure and the stress is and when yeah. they release and their bowels, that that's a big first deal. Time I really felt it with her where it was like she truly reached her threshold where it was like she couldn't bounce back and do anything. Apology for my technical difficulties. I don't know what's going on, but something started signing into to Zoom or uh, I don't know. <laughs> my bad, learning here. <laughs> um, I don't video. see you on camera yet. There you go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> keeps changing my stuff. Okay, we're back. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know what happened. I tried to sign in so I could see who's watching. Chaz watching, Patty's watching, Emily's here, Julie's here. Hi guys. Hi. Um, they all love Alex, <laughs> Reclaim host. Oh, I probably, maybe Claudia signed on or something and that uh, did something, I don't know. And she's, this is her, this is Claudia's. Hi Claudia. I'm <laughs> sorry. She's, Claudia lets us use her Zoom for free. <laughs> so sometimes you just gotta, hey Claudia, how are you? So we appreciate you, Claudia. I was um, trying to I was trying to sign in ahead of time and I couldn't find the link. So I had to wait till I got home. So 
Okay, sorry, Alex, you continue. I'm sorry, where you at? I know um, you were at PetSmart. Yeah, um, so obviously PetSmart was a complete failure and I didn't attempt to go back because it wasn't what we needed at that time. And so then I found, I found a third trainer at that point um, who was at the daycare I was sending her to. And we started learning some really good stuff with her like place and a lot of the tools you teach us, but I, she never put the pieces together of like, how is this going to help my fearful dog? And I just felt like we really weren't making progress. And then she ended up leaving the daycare and then I was back on my own again. Um, so that's when I started. They might not have known. That's what I found is, is as much as, and even just with my own personal journey, right? Like as much as I knew, and as much as I was growing among the years, there were things that no one was teaching me. And then I was getting into deeper waters and then I had to just go out on my own and start searching. Right. And then what I found since I found all my information and and a lot of peace, not that I'm still not searching for things, um, was that a lot of people don't know, right. I would go to just because maybe their pain point isn't as high Mm -hmm. or they, they just haven't been into the the muck you know yeah so well, 100 because like by yeah. that point I was on the edge I was like really worried I was gonna lose Noel because I was still living in a condo and she was driving everyone in the building nuts because of her separation anxiety we couldn't even go on walks down our street and I was like what am I gonna do and mm. I literally googled like dog trainers specializing in anxiety and that's how I found you really <laughs> yeah really? Really? look at our our uh yeah and it was all the reviews from the community where I was like fearful dog reactive dog oh my god sign me up <laughs> Hey, Claudio, can you turn your camera off? Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, that's really neat. And it makes me, my heart feel good that, that, um, that's how you found us because the, um, even just the last two weeks, I started putting the word reactivity. I ought to put anxiety in there or fear or something because I've gotten a lot of reactivity calls this week because I think it looks intimidating to come to a class and see everybody doing so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. It looks all perfect because the classes are mixed, right? Because you've got some advanced people in there, you have intermediate people and you have basic people in the community class. So it look, you know, you have people with dogs, barking and going bananas and having to walk away and and then you have dogs just sitting there looking like boy they need to get their stuff together (laughs) and it and it can make you if you're a new person think feel embarrassed and feel um like you don't belong yeah really I was so embarrassed my first class and just nervous because we pulled up to the park And Noelle was terrified. I couldn't even get her to walk from the car to the pavilion. Like I would have had to literally drag her on the leash. So I had to pick her up and carry her into the pavilion to just get to class the first day. Was she five months when you adopted her or was she five months when she came into the class? Uh, Five months when I adopted her. And I think we were like eight or nine months by the time I got to you guys. I was gonna say, I don't think you, I was like, she was under a year. Yeah. So that was what my memory and I was like, but I don't think she was a baby baby, but um, she was still really young because I remember um, one that stands out for me is like when we went to the farmer's market. Yeah. right we were going on pack walks and then we went, for both of us <laughs> yeah we go really early I'm just glad that I could see um something like that because once we started getting some momentum we weren't seeing that stuff anymore so it was really good to see like what she was like I remember the vet was a really big deal yeah I want to hear about that but the farmer's market it was uh we go early and I think we had taken a walk that day first. Yeah. So we had, we had had 
good experiences because we went early. So we weren't really thinking about it and there wasn't a lot of people. And then we went for a walk and then went to the farmer's market. And then, so it was a little busier. And then um, she was like, we were in the produce place and she's like, look, I'm going to get under this table. So it was like, and I'm not coming out. <laughs> I'm not coming out. And if you, if you try too hard, I'm going to take this whole table and all this produce down. So it was like a, you know, a little bit of a, delicate act to get her out and yeah, you, know, and, you know I came in and helped and got her out of there and and it was a good lesson for us to know where her threshold was yeah um, because when we're there early we make good choices and we go early a lot because we have a lot of dogs that are nervous that that struggle on walks and that's why we take the walks so I don't want to go for dogs that are just starting out on these walks that are like mobbed like if you go to the pier yeah. it's it's a very populated town so like trainers in texas or trainers up in a little more rural florida are going to have different things than we do here right they they have space we don't have space we have people coming down in high rises and elevators and struggling to get down <laughs> out of their apartments you know because they're mm -hmm. and it and it's crazy because I really love how we've started to break stuff down now that we don't practice in those chaotic times. Yeah. We really refocus, find an area that has similar expressions of anxiety, but just more mild and not, not with all the distractions and not with all the stress but it just comes from maybe a little bit of an entitlement at the house. Yeah. Freedoms, uh, looking at your rewards. I mean, we talk about the reward systems a lot. I know that's been a big one for you is um, toys. Realizing that Noel having access to toys is not only building entitlement, it's keeping her brain. I like to uh, describe Noel's brain as two. As a, a, well, I'm sorry, one monkey with symbols and she's just <laughs> so it's getting those symbols to kind of you know, slow down to a smoother rhythm instead of it being just this crazy yeah. um, thing. So when she doesn't know how to be bored, if you're busy or whatever, she can go get a toy and just be like, <laughs> you know, and just just keep that brain, those symbols just going. So I think that's a um, that was a big key that when we started hitting that um, yeah. and viewing it different than just the entitlement. Cause I always like to describe toys being out as, um, you know, a kid having three cars and then you just get to pick, pick which one you want <laughs> to drive. It was deeper for Noel. Like she literally couldn't exist in the house without doing something unless I put her in place or put her in the kennel and mm -hmm. removing the toys and, removing access to the windows like now she's forced to make the decision to go lay down on her bed because she doesn't have distractions and yeah and it's not a command yeah that's the key it's not that we're not teaching commands it's not that I don't love training and learning all the things and all the nice little obedience training I I absolutely love that but it was like I was force feeding that into this ball of mess and not you just every dog that walks in the door anywhere but because I think unless you got lucky and found us because you have a puppy you're here with it for anxiety whether it be and it's the same root anxiety we talk about this a lot right same root anxiety with different expressions the my pain point was really high because my dog's expression was aggression. He is going to bite you. He's going to hold on. Not me personally, but another dog, right? Like, or people, he's not people, but another dog, he's holding on and he's not letting go. He's not letting go. So there was a lot of lessons that I had to learn through that experience to get me to the realization that Noel's fear and Noel's exuberant wiggles are all anxiety. So then that helped me find um, like 
Archie's exuberant wiggles, Archie's a lab, right? So the classic lab, exuberant wiggles, the classic golden that's just uh, bananas. You know, I was just at a golden too. They have two goldens. Uh, I did a home session the other night with um, Michelle and we love them. And Romy does like the, not Romy, uh, Marcy does this T-Rex thing. She stands on her legs and it's, she just reminds me a lot of Noel to where it's just, she just doesn't know what to do with herself. So by using the pressure technique and not having it be obedience, because if Michelle tells her what to do, Marcy does great. But that leads you into a life of micromanaging, all, nothing but micromanaging. Oh, look at Emily. Look, oh, look how far she has come. Night and day from cl uh, first class to most recent. You got that right, lady. You yeah, now right. she walks in like she owns the place. <laughs> Dad's on. Hi, Pete. So grateful you have to have you and Alex and Noel's life. Uh, I'm grateful that she's in our life. Um, it's, oh, oh, we're not on gallery view. That stinks. Hey, Claudia, if you're still on, can you switch us to gallery view? Do you, or do I have to do that? I don't know how to do that. Um, hey, see? Claudia comes in handy as if it's, or I guess maybe we got to do that in the beginning to record it that way. Um, right. Um, do people have their cameras on or did you also tell them to tell, turn them off? Cause you're not going to see people if the cameras are off. No, it's just me and Alex. Okay. never mind. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Um, so yeah, the a different expressions. So like Archie's exuberant wibbles, we get into that fear uh, stage, right? And then why is that any different than the happy lab that's got no problems, that chooses what he wants to do all the time, all the time, all the time, because he's so good. That was Melina. I just didn't see it. I didn't understand. I knew it was something. I knew because in certain areas, I was just like, <laughs> I don't know what to do here. And I wasn't getting that, that specific help at the club. Just, I didn't know what to ask. I was embarrassed to ask. Um, so many different reasons. I was like, I, yeah. I, I also know. Felt and when I like people didn't understand the pain. I was like, no, but really this is more than her not just wanting to go in her crate. Like there's something not right with how much she hates her crate like you know what I mean and it's like yeah. really hard to explain to people it's like this isn't just a puppy acting out there's something not wrong normal happening yeah yeah because those even just the video you sent uh yeah. <laughs> me the other day was like um Alex has a camera and so when Noelle's in the, the crate she can watch um and see what's what so Noelle will have these like it used to be violent yeah. tamper, or temper tantrums, right? And it re always remind people of to think of a kid in a store and you didn't buy them something and they're like throwing themselves on the floor. I and they're she throws leaving. herself on the side in the kennel howling. <laughs> and it used to be violent where it would scare you that she was going to hurt herself or bust yeah. out of the kennel or so much. So I remember we lent you one of our impact crates that is an anxiety proof where that's what saved my life because Gates was busting out of the crate. Chad had to cut him. His two front teeth were stuck on the wire and he was taking, Chad was taking a nap. Dogs were in the crate, should have been fine. And uh, it was a storm or something came and oh, Gates yeah. got big storm phobia. So investing in this ridiculously expensive crate um, was the best decision I ever had, you know, and um, it's worth every penny. Yeah, it folds I got up it like through surgery and now she loves her kennel. She, it's her room now. She chooses to go in there. It just took her having no other option. <laughs> yeah. It seems expensive until it's worth it. Right. And then, you know, I start looking at different things like investments, you know what I mean? Like it was worth it that I knew I could leave the house during a storm and Gates not try to kill himself out of the kennel or um, he goes and just starts trying to dig into the closets and ripping everything apart. So you come to like a, <laughs> the nightstand, like across the room and the rug <laughs> and the, the 
lamps across the room. And it's, he's like, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm digging out of here. So it, <laughs> it was just, it helped him self-soothe. It helped me relax. It just helped our whole dynamic. It was uh, yeah. a big deal. Okay. So we, where are we <laughs> been? Say hi. <laughs> no one says, you've been talking <laughs> about me. Like Heather. <laughs> I know. Well, I love, I love uh, when you're on the phone or something and they yeah. hear, they recognize like people always tell me they play my videos and then they, they, um, the dogs like coming and be oh, like, she'll wake up from a dead sleep. If she hears your voice or like the chefs or something, she's like, are those my friends? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> she loves the chefs yeah. and Riley. Yeah. Holy moly. She is like, so Noelle, oh like when she, she uh, gets wiggly, yeah. she's just, her whole body's just wiggling. And if she really likes the dog and then she's all up in their face and that's Kiss very them. rude yeah. to a dog, you know? And she's just, she's just hit all up on them. And so we're trying to teach her to just chill out. And then she's completely opposite if she doesn't trust the dog or know the dog or they're giving off a strange vibe where they match her crazy energy. She's like, oh, she's got hackles up and she's just. Oh, yeah, God. but that never happened so, before we built up her confidence. She was isn't that interesting. She, yeah, she'd run away really or she had her office went up in the tree house for like how many years? She um, did. She did for at least the yeah. first year or more. Yeah. yeah. She would go yeah. up because she felt safe, Koa too. And she would go and chill up there and be like, you got, y'all do what you want to do down there. I'm going to be up here in my office. <laughs> and and then they would play up there and have a great time. <laughs> and, so she, and she's really interesting. She's learning. And so what we think is like when when a dog comes up to you and wants to be pet and people go, Oh, puppy. Oh, Julie says we love our impact. Yeah. Gracie's a <laughs> Gracie's a jailbreaker. <laughs> that probably changed. I'll never forget the video when Gracie was at your house and there were like sharp teeth coming through the kennel. <laughs> <laughs> she was putting her paw up and being like, Nah, nah. And then as I was just trying to video that. I was doing the dishes and I could see her through the window. And then and then she's like, so I was pure luck that I got that one. That was funny. I'm, I'm the fun, you lose the good videos, you know. Yeah. Um oh, what were we talking about? It's weird. Let's see, we were at PetSmart trainer, and then oh. what happened? Then you found us with anxiety, and then you came into class carrying her. Yeah. Um, and then Kristen was there with her perfect chefs and some other people who had been there. For intimidating. It made me so intimidated. I was like, I can't even get my dog to walk into class. <laughs> yeah, she can be intimidating. She works really hard. She does. She works really hard, you know, and she's an interesting one, too, because she came in with um, at Co baby Koa. She stalked me for seven months i think i might get that wrong it might be five um seven rings in my uh, my head from a different state and then decided to come and then bane she thought bane didn't need anything and then bane i was like bane's got some anxiety there you know and so we started working on bane and so i think that opened her eyes up to a whole new path too it's kind of neat um made her double down she definitely doubled down and and got bane to a crazy different place yeah, yeah totally. um, so tell me some of the things that have been helping you I mean it's been two and a half years now right somewhere around yeah. there yeah and it seems crazy I mean you say that to people they're like wow yeah have you been learning for why have, why isn't I've, all these I've problems? had so many people ask me like when are you gonna stop training your dog? I'm like, never. <laughs> like you don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> we're a cult. We've been called a cult. And you know, we're okay with it. We're all right with it being a cult. So yeah. um because you either have, you either got good juice or you got the bad juice to drink. So we just happen to be a cult with good juice, good Kool-Aid, and it it uh, ends up leaking 
into the rest of your life. Like yeah. literally one of my favorite things for you, Alex, was the day that you came to me and you said, you know, I've been saying no at work more. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is, this is changing me. And I was yeah. all like, gotcha, gotcha. Cause True. it's hard to get people to know that, that this whole journey with us is actually working on yourself and slowing down and just working on the things that you do and not necessarily what the dog's doing. Just put your blinders on, have a little blind faith and do the exercises. They all have meaning later. They really yeah. do. That and if you don't do lesson with Noah, yeah. it was like thinking we could skip ahead on a lot of the early stuff and isn't that people, a bitch. yeah <laughs> they're like why can't we make any progress on her anxiety it's like been a year what are we doing here like there was some small growth and then someone had to get knee surgery for her to make us go back and do all the place cut and kennel time and restricting everything and we made more progress in those six months than we did the year before isn't that ridiculous it's yeah. it's it makes you frustrated. Yeah. Frustrated. It, it's frustrating because you work so hard and you think you can skip ahead, man. But those, those basic exercises, boy, they matter so much. It's, 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 it's almost just pisses you off. It really you know? does. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I've been doing you, stuff with you seven days a week, taking you to every place in town, trying to expose you to things and laying around the house and doing nothing made the biggest difference. <laughs> it's stupid. It's yeah. stupid. I mean, and I love saying in class, I mean, Patty's probably watching this and um, she had to break her collarbone. Yep. <laughs> right? to break her collarbone two paws was a wild beast he's a, a mostly lab mix i think he's got some husky or something in there um and he she was one of the people that was way off so the people that you see in the circle now started way out there it's just hard to grasp that when you're on the outside because because literally when you come to class it's like oh is your dog barking all right, walk that way. <laughs> yep. Oh, all right, come back. They are done barking? Okay, come back. Oh, barking again? Uh, you go that way. You know, yeah. walk that way, find their marbles, wait till you find their marbles and make your way back. And it's it has to be isolating too for new people. It's like being yeah. able to have faith that all of that's going to be worth it because you might be doing it for months before you really get integrated with the community and it's pretty impressive that so many people do stick with it when they're really not all the way in and it's like that pain point is so strong it's worth it yeah I'm glad you said that about pain point I mean let's really describe what we're talking about because you know we talk in class a lot so we start using this mumbo jumbo techniques that people are like what the heck does that mean um pain point to us in our eyes is how much does it hurt? My dog was biting other dogs. It was hurting pretty bad. The liability there goes up and up and up and up and up. If he keeps doing it, if he does, if he does it again, do you know what I mean? I, I got lucky that it was with my own dog and a couple times and, and there was nothing that couple times there was no punctures or something, you know? But there was a couple of times that there was. I just got lucky who it was with to learn enough lessons to be like, oh, okay, <laughs> we need some, we need some help for real, yeah. you know. There, and then that was the pain point, right? So if your dog's expression to his anxiety is exuberant wiggles, and the most he does is knock over grandma, and you got to have him on a leash, your pain point is is mildly high but it's not that high you can get around it for most of your life you just watch those areas right and you deal with a lot of the other stuff that they're giving you but when your pain point is your dog could be put down that's my pain point your pain point was am i ever going to be able to leave the house <laughs> literally this dog 
My mom and dad had to come down and stay with Noelle when I had to go to the office or something the first few months because I couldn't leave her for eight hours because she was howling for eight hours straight. <laughs> puppy, puppy. Right. And when you get a puppy and then there's a few months, so she was five months. So she had who knows what happened for the first two months. And that's a big window of time where they're in learning about things. And if you don't, if you have a breeder, they're helping get that. If you have a good breeder, that's really into it for not the money, you know, not a backyard breeder that wants to get some money off you, but with someone that wants to preserve the lines, they want to make sure you got a confident dog. They want to make sure you got a dog that's not going to run away. They got a dog, you know what I mean? And you can go there and ask them. Then you have rescues, which God love them, but they're man, who knows what, that's where all the props are coming from, right? Like who right. knows what happened in those two months with that backyard breeder. And then you got the rescue or the pound or what happened in the next three months. So before four months, you have a fear period there. That puppy is deciding what, how they feel about life, how they feel about um, human society, how they feel about their leader. Then she obviously didn't stay wherever she was. So she bounced around until she found you. So she probably wasn't feeling too good about life by the time she got to you. And yeah. then we make it actually been mistake. transferred from a different rescue in New Jersey the day before I got her at the Humane Society. So it's like, who knows what this girl's gone through. She literally got moved across the country. Didn't you say she was the one that was hiding behind the wa water bowl? Don't I do that description? Yeah. Because <laughs> I make three descriptions, right? There's three types of dogs that you're going to come into contact with, whether you're looking for a puppy or a rescue or whatever. There's the dog number one that's going to be like, hey, hey, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. That's the exuberant wiggles and overexcitement I'm talking about. That's the same anxiety route, different expression. Then you have the Noels of the world that are like, <laughs> hiding behind the water bowl and you're like I can help this puppy and then that expression of anxiety is rooted in a lot of fear right and then you have a different expression for that just total scared of everything and then you have the dog that's like and I think being able to differentiate the two is important too because when I went to the rescue and saw Noelle, I was like, oh, this dog's really chill. She's like sitting in the back of the kennel, <laughs> like really. But now looking back, I'm like, she was probably pretty nervous. Like she didn't look outwardly scared, but that was probably what it was knowing her personality. Now she was trying to make space for herself. And right. And in that, that's in that neat that I love that you use expressions like that, uh, making space. Let's see, we got some uh, comments. Love it. In, in cat crate Kristen Elizabeth motivated me too oh Kristen and the Sheps motivated Emily too I was impressed with her recalls when we first started yeah Kristen and Emily and I started around the same time so <laughs> Chris, I tell Kristen all the time that she's very valuable to me it was worth helping her with Bain just besides the fact that I just wanted to do it anyway I didn't do it for anything uh, she just became very valuable I'm like you walking around with your with your two chefs looking so nice. I mean, you're just a walking billboard for me. So I, I try to thank her all the time for being such a proactive member of the community. You know, uh, Kelly says she was an anchor for her too. Seeing her work hard and knowing I could trust her around my dogs was very valuable. Um, everything, timing happens for a reason. Oh, Jersey girl. Is that, oh, is that where Al, uh, <laughs> so, I think it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's so interesting. And um, I think the fact that we were doing so much work for the first year, we were doing all the things and the exercises and the stuff. And, you know, and I always ask people, are you doing place at home? Are you doing the tie back stuff at home? Are you doing those pressure exercises we practice at home? Are you doing, are you moved outside? Have you done this? Are you, you keeping it up? And then I always get, yeah, yeah, we're going to start, you know, are you practicing the boring things? So what it took for Patty and then what it took for you, Patty had to break her own collarbone. You were lucky yeah. enough that it was 
Noel or Noel not so lucky that she had to break her her yeah. leg um, and her tore uh, some cartilage and stuff in her knee. So her slowing down was huge. Huge. He forced it because mom cares so much to not let the knee get worse. <laughs> that her pain point, right? Let's talk about that pain point. The pain point with the fear alone was not enough to get you to go up. Right. But and it when was the risk was was her hurting herself more. Bam! I got you. You that was that was the moment. Yeah. yeah. And I think the key differentiator for us was like, I was doing place at home. We were taking the cot and going and sitting in parks, but it was like an hour here, an hour there. We never did those like long haul, you're going to sit your butt here all day or five hours or all the things you always talk about with Nicole. Um, yeah. we, were, we never made time for that. Like I'm busy. I'm a working girl. Noel, we were always doing class. We always had things to do. And it was so easy to just be like, we're training, we're doing the things. I'm not going to worry about it, but making time, extensive periods of time to do nothing was really what turned it around. And it's hard. It's hard to think. And that sounds so brutal when you say five hours on place. So now I really want to tap into that and remember dogs sleep a lot. So yeah, if you have a dog and you're forcing it to do five hours of place and you haven't done enough little reps to get the dog to be relaxed on place yet, then that's a little over the top, right? So we should start with smaller stuff. If you're, if you had, Alex has been doing this for a few years, right? So now Noel can easily sleep for three or four hours right? So now if you pay attention to when nap times come about during the day for your dog, especially weekends or whatever, you know, after you go and play, my dog passes out in the kitchen for three or four hours and I don't, she's busy. She's sleeping. She doesn't care what I'm doing. Let's utilize those hours and be, an hour before that, let's do place. Then the dog's doing an hour of mental place and then it passes out and it takes the nap. It was gonna take anyway, it was gonna take the nap anyway, but now you were able to grasp the value of it and put it into a place that it's like, I asked you to sit here for X amount of time. You know, it's that was a big one for me to, to, and you know what, it was me learning how to explain it because I had the exercises. I understood the exercises. I was teaching the exercises. People were finding um, success in it. But the more I studied communication with humans, right, the better I got at explaining it. Suddenly my explanations became, are becoming more and more. And the more I explain them, the better they come. And then there it's like, okay. And then suddenly I see light bulbs going off and light bulbs going off because I have to explain it in about a thousand different ways because everybody <laughs> soaks in information differently. So just because I say it to you and it makes sense, it doesn't mean I'm going to say it to to somebody else. Mike is a great explanation or example of that. Like he's my, he's my girl grandpa, right? Because I'll say stuff to women and it makes sense. And then I'll say it to Mike. And it's not that it doesn't make sense. It just didn't resonate as important for a man or for, you know what I mean? For a different human. It doesn't have to be all women, but we have a lot of women in class and now we have a lot more men coming in. So yeah. Mike has really helped me open up the way I communicate and the way I word things. And um, cause he's like, you must be really hard on yourself. <laughs> cause I would use like, in my mind, I would use like, where are the holes in my training or the gaps that I'm missing? Right. And then he likes, he put me onto the word opportunity and I would use opportunity. Oh, so many places, so many places, but not in that little context right there. And after we talked, 
he's like, you know, if I would have said, if he would have said it this way, opportunity, I would have clicked. And I was like, oh, he helps me with stuff like that. And I appreciate that with him. And he is, um, now I started using the word opportunity. It's ridiculous. He's ridiculously smart and he helps me all the time, but it's, man, the word opportunity has come back to me. I can't even count how many times it's just over and over and over I, from other people because I'm able to pop it into the right places. Boop, 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 boop. And suddenly it doesn't seem like a chore. It's a choice. Yeah. And that changes everything. I'm like, it's this, it's ridiculous. It's the slightest little change in everything helps everything. So it's, it's pretty neat to watch. I had no slowdown before the community showed their love to help us through. That's Patty. She had no slowdown before she broke her collarbone and had more choice. By the way, she broke her collarbone. And within a few months, you saw this lady one handed yeah. wrangling this dog. That so she, arm, in sling. <laughs> arm in a sling. This dog was just two paws, just listening to mom because what her pain point went through the roof. If I don't get this together, I'm not gonna be able to keep my dog. That's a big deal. And guess what? She got it together. Guess what? You are not being able to take, you had to carry Noel to the vet. Ooh, tell us about the vet. That's a oh, good, yeah. one. That's a great so story. Noel's famous at the vet. Cause she, <laughs> <laughs> when I first adopted her, she was always terrified of the vet. And it's usually like, <laughs> an Olympic experience trying to like pull her out from under chairs and get her so they can actually examine her um and so my vet after going through three different trainers I was like I need help we finally decided to put her on anxiety meds which I was cautious about um and like shortly after that's when I found you so it's kind of like all the pieces sort of got put together at the same time um so we did the anxiety meds for what a year, maybe a year and a half. I forgot about the anxiety meds already. Yeah, I did too. And so like, I like, oh, I like forgot about the bit. Yeah. So we were on the anxiety meds for like the first year and a half. I guess we were working with you. And then we finally got to a point where I could get her off the meds. And now the vet is like they she loves them. <laughs> She'll just go fall asleep on the floor while we're waiting for appointments. And she does so well. Like she, they, she's supposed to be bribed with treats with new people, but the overall experience isn't as traumatic as it used to be. Yeah. She's come so far. It's yeah. really neat. And, and it's really neat to see Harper come in. Oh my God. And it's been two years. So, you know, I forget, but it's cause it's not my dog. I didn't go through the struggles. Not that I don't forget, but you know, you're just like, that's right. She did. We did have this. Isn't that awesome that you get to forget some of the big struggles that yeah. like, that's right. We did do that. And then, and you give Mike hope that, you know, that uh, Harper's got some hope to, she's already seeing all sorts of different uh, progress with her. Yeah. And then to see Noel just kind of doing her thing that you know just keep keep plugging along because you'll get there you know yeah I think that's, that's the key the thing, like that shocks me about all of it is like every once in a while I'll do something I'll be like whoa we weren't able to do that two years ago <laughs> I'm trying to think like I think I texted you something a few weeks ago I don't I'm trying to remember what it was now it's gone from my brain but it's like things like the vet and just I can't remember able- it was well, something well, really like mundane, but I was like, we used to not be able to do this. <laughs> you know, what was a big one that I loved is when you posted that video of Noel in the garage with the garage oh, yeah. door opening, that was a huge feat for any dog, right? Then we had to back up. And I remember you saying something about, uh, oh, it used to be the treadmill that scared her, you know? And I was like, it used to be the fan before, <laughs> before he even got the treadmill before he even turned it on it was just the fan out there and now yeah. she's like hey turn that fan on you know yeah that she lays with it in her face at class now and that's where she first got exposed to class um fans was at class like you brought them when it was summer and she was like the heck is this thing i want nothing to do with it and it took probably five or six classes before i could get her to lay with it <laughs> 
<laughs> she's like, and it's so neat. It's so, it's funny how things just take effect, right? Like um, somebody's got a fan, bam, everybody's got fan. Yeah. So, somebody's got a tr- travel kennel, bam, everybody's got a travel kennel. And I think that travel kennel was um, so neat to incorporate into classes and have you know, if we were doing two classes and you brought two dogs, it was a way to bring two dogs. Just like if we were doing sports, you know, when they do sports or agility trials, they'll bring a crate and the dog goes in a crate and chills and it, and it learns that calm muscle, you know? Um, yeah. So I thought that was really, I really enjoy watch, watching the little things that everybody goes, they got yeah. the same <laughs> water dispenser, the same once one person finds something good. Yeah, it's find the good, yeah. <laughs> You know, nobody holds back. Oh, is that a good one? Oh, okay. Like you just trust, you trust the community and their, their value and stuff and different things. It's, it's pretty interesting to watch um, the dynamic in that. Um, like when you first come in, it's everybody's pretty social. So it's even if you're not a social person, it seems like, oh, I don't want to be in there because I'm going to have to be social. I don't want yeah. to. But the truth is, is you could stand out there and not talk to anybody and no one will give, no one would think twice about it. You could stand there and be not social and just, you know, mildly social, but not have these long conversations. And there's people that do it all the time. And it's ridiculous <laughs> because in the end, the people that aren't social end up being social because there was no pressure to be social. It's- <laughs> It's I don't ridiculous. think I talked to anyone the first six months in class. <laughs> and yeah. then I started being like, oh, I have a lot in common with these people. And I was like, oh, look, there's other girls my age who are here struggling with similar things. Maybe I should talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a beautiful thing about the community. Yeah, because you've made some friends. Um, oh, there's sure. a few of you that are pretty tight. Then it's kind of neat to watch, like, you guys are going out to dinner and doing different things. And, um, it's neat because you got stuff in common. You got similar goals. Your dogs know each other, you know, just and a different way to meet to like people. have people, friends with dogs who understand the troubles you're having and know your struggles. And I know if we go somewhere, I trust them to hold my dog when no one else in the world I probably trust, you know, and right. you know, that struggle. It's really hard to find people who truly get it. I didn't let anybody walk gates. I think my mom, I can walk them. I'm like, no. <laughs> chat, even when chat, it took chat years to walk him, to even want to, because I was like, be careful, be careful. <laughs> I put up red flags. There's just, I probably put him, you know, they probably got traumatic disorder from that with <laughs> just from me being like, watch out, be careful, be careful. Him and Michaela. <laughs> And then now he can do anything with Gates, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, it took a lot of trust on my part because when something, you know, something threatens your dog's life, that's like, that's terrifying. It's just, I can't describe it. Um, It's insane. And, oh, let's talk about Noelle's feelings. So we, she was so nervous and we did all this confidence building, right? She was only about eight months and we're doing all this confidence building. And you went from a dog that was like in class, like, Hey, well, stay over there. Oh, stay. No, uh, 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 stay up there. Then she started getting comfortable in class. She started making some friends. She's like, okay, you're good. You stay over there. I know that you're good staying over there. I trust the situation, trusting mom more. And then this is the beauty about community classes. Like you get so intimidated and you think that your dog has to be perfect in community class. Your dog is barking and I don't want to disrupt class. And baby, you're barking dogs. The reason we're there. We want you to walk into class barking. We want you to do because it's helping the people that have been there for a few years get your their dog used to like that coworker they don't like without them telling them that you know, kiss it or whatever, they are able to be like, oh, that's just Johnny. <laughs> He's like that, you know, and, and tolerate it. So Noelle went from being like, oh, I don't know about this to new dog. She's like, are you not following the rules? I'm yeah. going to need you to follow the rules. 
It's so, so funny that, too. Like the first two or three classes, new dogs show up. She like is grilling them hard. Like she's watching them walking into class, and I'm having to walk her out. But it's like as soon as she knows, she's like, "Oh, they're in the club now. She'll ignore them. <laughs> they don't exist." Anymore. Right. Oh, they got the email. Yeah. They're doing the thing because it's funny. That's what I try to tell people. Like when their dogs are reacting in class, whether you've been in class and your dog is still reacting or you're brand new and your dog's reacting. If you're brand new, your dog might be just reacting to everything and that's okay. But most times I doubt it because there's a lot of reactive dogs in class. And even though they're walking and they don't look like they have reactivity, they got a lot of feelings like Noelle, she might not be barking and going bananas, but man, when she's walking, she's telling a story with her body. Like you better keep your distance suckers. I got lots of, you know, she's telling stuff. So you might have a dog that's walking by and, and not showing any signs like Noelle so it shows hers physically. They might just be showing them mildly physically, maybe just their ears or maybe just their stance yeah. or, you know, something, their one eyes. Of the biggest things I've learned in class, like it just especially about my own dog is like there's so many different forms of anxiety and reactivity and how it gets shown in a dog and the number of people who've come into class and be like Noelle struggles with fear and anxiety she's so happy here <laughs> like, right. she's probably one of the most anxious ones here <laughs> right yeah. it's it's really good for people to see that yeah. because it's um body language is everything and, and watching them and understanding the anxiety and um and the, and the thing is, I think that what people struggle with is that if you take that happy lab and you teach them how to be bored, it's going to take away the happiness. And that's so far from the truth. It's, it's sad, actually. And what it does is it increases their happiness. Their personality is still that goofy personality you why would anyone want to destroy a goofy personality of a great dog right? right it's just it's just unnecessary and gosh doesn't that make your life suck because that's the that's the best part is their their personality and the, yeah. the way they feel about you and their life and the way they express it and to stifle that is not but to teach them how to control themselves how to be in a moment that's exciting and know what is church and school and work etiquette and what is party etiquette. So we always like to say that Noelle has the party, just like Archie. He's, she's got the party. Like, she used to come into the party, like to class, like I got the party, everybody let's go. Let's go. Because she's off of shit. She can have the party. And then she could also be like, no, <laughs> I don't want to party with you. She's very picky who she's partying with, right? But we're teaching Noelle to, she can still have the party in her pocket anytime she wants. And then she can just pull it up. Are you want, oh, no, no? Okay. <laughs> that's so I'll save it. You know, I'll save it for somebody that is ready. That's one of my friends, right? And it's teaching her how to make space when she feels uncomfortable, how to, and that's by you, like when she has reactions, which she hasn't had in class much. She might have not the physical yeah, reactions. She'll get some started. like hackles up and then that's usually my sign to make space for her. I'm getting much better at reading the early signs. Correct. And I think that is a big thing to talk about too, is because, because you're finding the earlier signs, we like to call it the wick right? The, the fuse. So you got the fire, that's her exploding, barking or having like expression, like a vocal expression or a physical expression where they're jumping up or both. Um, that's your fire. So in the beginning, you're going to have to study the fire and, and have it happen and walk away and make space so that you can study your dog, find out what is happening before those explosions, right? And find the fuse. And what does that look like? So you, her fuse is staring. Yeah. <laughs> her fuse serious. is like her. And this, <laughs> this is just for me knowing Noel. And some of these are gates too, right? Like uh, her stance, her shoulders get tight. Her hackles go up. Like the hackles is. Her hackles after. are serious. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, the hackles are free, but they're, yeah. That's like one step away from exploding. Correct. And and yes. the further you get down, so in the beginning, the hackles might be the those the fuse that you're able to see and get to. And then the more you study, it just has to do with studying your dog. Study yeah. that dog. If that dog's having explosions in class, what's happening? Don't stress about the explosions that's why we're here that's why we're here to see the explosions to find out what to do what's happening before that start studying that dog watch them don't be watching everybody else watch the dog know that this dog's gonna set your dog off what's he doing before that bam got the fuse so the more the further down the fuse you got i haven't seen noelle have a full reaction like she was having because that she never had reactions before. Then right. we built so much confidence. That was so interesting to watch. She built so much confidence that Noelle started being okay with expressing how she felt about a sucker, you know? And then <laughs> she's like, and so then we were like, okay, now we gotta now reel it back. <laughs> Let's reel in some of those. And let's let's not tell the coworker we don't like that they can just go to hell, you know. Um, so the more we got into that, the the easier it is. So I, I'm so proud of you for all you've done and all you keep doing, and that you haven't give up, given up. You know, what I mean, like that's the hardest part. Is yeah. it sucks sometimes. Some days suck. Are we not done yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, I think if you're in the community or you're thinking about coming to the community, a big piece of this is knowing that you can text me. Most times I'm really fast to text back. If I'm in class or I'm sleeping, don't worry because I don't answer the phone. I don't hear it when I'm sleeping or whatever. You can text me at any time and I wake up to it or I, whatever, I find it later. And when I have time, I will text you back and give you a little troubleshooting or something. So uh, that's a big deal to have that that support system and know that you can bounce some ideas off me and get me to bring sometimes the stress level down for you so that you can refocus, forget about whatever just happened, breathe a little, and then move forward because that's the key is just like going to the gym. Like you might miss a weekend, but did you go on Monday? Did you go again? You know? Um, all right, Alex, it is 8.30. Let's ask one more question. So if you were to say something to somebody that was thinking about signing up and they maybe watched videos or they came to class and it just seems like their dog would not fit in the group or it would be a distraction or what would you tell them? I would say don't be self-conscious at all because everyone in class has been in a similar situation at one point in time. And honestly, most of us who have been here two, three years, we've had a serious hard battle and we're, we just want to help everyone else because we totally understand. So don't be intimidated and come on out. Yay. I love that. And I think that is probably one of the most true statements I've ever heard is how giving you guys are because it's uh it's crazy to see the, the community. I mean, I named it the community and I never had any knowledge that it would turn into something so wonderful because not only has it made room, the safe place for everybody to grow that's in the community, it made a safe place for me to grow and for me to find better ways to communicate and to teach everyone. And I think that safe space is... Um, Oh, underestimated or was overrated, underrated. Yeah, <laughs> so it's pretty neat, you know. Well, I thank you for coming on and I hope everybody, let's see what comments we got um, before we wrap up. Um, first time I met Patty, she was in the sling. I thought, <laughs> man, if this, if she can wrangle that big black dog, I can wrangle mine. I love it. These come, <laughs> Emily, these companies, that was Julie. Uh, these companies need to sponsor you because the cult <laughs> buys them <laughs> in bulk. I love it. <laughs> As I, I'm going to say the cult, man. I'm like, I'm okay. People call us a cult. I'm like, do it. I'm in a little BNI group and I tell them, look, I'm kind of building a cult. I know what it looks like from the inside. This is a cult. And it's, <laughs> BNI has changed me for my business so much that I'm like, 
drink the Kool-Aid. So I kind of get it, you know? Uh, oh, Le Lenore's here. Yay. Emily says, trust is the best bond our tribe group have together. That is true. Uh, Claudia says, thanks. Great interview, Alex. Yay, Alex, I appreciate you coming on so Thanks much and me. I hope you come on again and we see where you're at next time. I really love it. Thanks, lady. Bye, Bye guys.